This is the podcast, Playing Above the Line, where we get into the details of what it is that's made entrepreneurs and business leaders successful. Hi, I'm Dennis Sheeran, and I'm a business leader with Hartman, Blackman, and Kilgore. I've been the managing shareholder of HBK for many years and have worked with local businesses to learn what makes them successful throughout their career. And I'm Alan Cave. I'm also a shareholder at HBK, a full service accounting and business consulting firm. During our careers, Dennis and I have both been fortunate to work with many successful businesses and their owners, as well as other leaders throughout the accounting profession and beyond. We're happy to share some of their stories with you. Welcome to Playing Above the Line. I'm Dennis. How are you doing today, Alan? I'm doing well, thank you. I'm really excited about our first guest today, Vanessa Rayner. Vanessa is the co-founder and writer for Full and Well, a weekly newsletter that sends thousands of subscribers resources on living a life of faith and culture, business, art, hospitality, relationships, and rest. Vanessa, you're doing a lot <laughs> from what I've seen, and I keep up with you, obviously, on, on social media. What are you doing? Yes, I have a couple of different things I'm involved in. So these days, I run a business with a couple of partners called Full and Well, and I like to relate it to, it's kind of like the skim, but faith-based news and resources for you to kind of follow out your faith daily. And then I also am still running VMR as a marketing consultant. So I have a handful of businesses that I work with that I go in and help them with their marketing strategies. And I'm raising my babies. Raising those babies. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when you started this and, and, and it's grown. A lot. And tell, tell me a little bit more about how it started and what led you to that. So I was in a study with my two partners now, Rachel and Brad Good, and we were studying the book Garden City, which is written by author John Mark Comer. He's a pastor out in Oregon, and he wrote this entire book about how work can actually be your calling. And we did this really large study together and you could see kind of the strange looks on people's faces. Like they didn't understand at all how you could go to work and live out your faith or your job. And so we really wanted to kind of take that and talk about that more and provide people with the resources and the inspiration that they need to realize that work is a good thing and it can be a godly thing and it can be a way that you serve through the marketplace. And so that's really what we're trying to talk about is how there is no separation, how it can all be sacred. And we have grown to, yeah, a couple thousand subscribers at this point and it's still a brand new baby and we're still trying to figure it out, but it's been good. It's been fun. So when did the website actually start? January of this year, so 2018. Okay. Yes. So you're doing that. You're, you've got your marketing agency. You've got your two children. Mm -hmm. What does your time management look like? You've got a lot to juggle. So how do you go about prioritizing, getting things done? So I kind of always debunk this idea that there's this perfectly balanced life. I think that sometimes things are going to have to be sacrificed than others. And so I just have my rules. I have my red flags. For me, my family never gets sacrificed. So if something comes up where it means it's going to put too much pressure on my husband, or it's going to, I don't know, make me too stressed out to where I can't parent correctly, then I, I just say no. And I think the power of no is, is really, really good. And it helps us really focus and concentrate on what we're really wanting to do and can perfect. And so for me, full and well, like I'm all in, um, I, could, I do a lot of writing. And so I just do that um, when I'm at my home office and my kids are at school. And VMR, I only say yes to a certain amount of projects. I just know my limitations. And I want to be able to make really, really purposeful relationships with my clients that I think can benefit them and not take on a whole bunch of work. And I think I learned that lesson in the beginning. And when you start a business and you're trying to make a business function, it's really hard to say no to money. It's really hard to say no to business. And so I've just learned the hard way that if you only take on those certain projects that you're going to excel in and do really well out because it's your focus and say no to all the other stuff floating around, it's going to be better in the long term for business. And so the power of no is really important. And the power of sleep is really important for me. I need sleep. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm a big nap taker. So I, I, I can get on board with the. Uh... With sleep, for sure. <laughs> All right. So as we look at this, what about challenges? It needs to be known. We we obviously uh, 
know each other. And you, you worked with Hartman Blackman and Kilworth for a number of years and did a lot of great things for us. And But what are the challenges that you've faced in transforming to this, to the approach that you do to, to not just, it's not just work, it, it's your life, how you're living your life. What what would you say have been those things that challenged you most, but that were most important that you responded to them? Hmm. I think some of the largest challenges are obviously one, working as kind of a solo entrepreneur. You want to be able to bounce ideas and meet people that you can bounce ideas off. And sometimes it's just really hard to stay on track when you don't have maybe any affirmations around you. And also, I think one of the biggest challenges I've had, speaking of looking to work with businesses that have the same type of focus, like a social mission almost, um, you know, you're going to meet people that just do not understand what you're trying to do, or they're just not in the same boat, or they just don't have the same vision or the same goals. And that's okay. So I think having those hard conversations of why certain partnerships won't work is definitely a challenge. But just trusting yourself and trusting your gut and just having faith, which is really hard, is kind of what gets me through all that, I think. I, I, I like what you talked about in terms of purpose uh, and, and significance, probably. And they're, and they're, let's weave that into the what you're doing now with Full and Well. Mm-hmm. And because I, I think... From what I see, that's a big part of, of what it is. It's the purpose that you're doing this for is something bigger and how that business responds to that. Um, yeah. So I probably a handful of years ago, maybe 2014, 2015, I just kind of went from the mindset of my job is something that I do. I mean, you graduate college, you need a job to pay your bills, The American dream is that you climb this ladder, you keep getting promotions, you make as much money as you can, then you go buy some nice stuff and you live in a nice house and you've made it, right? So, and then, but there's so much research out there that shows how empty that really makes people feel and that leaves this huge void. So there's the, I, when I changed my mindset from my job is something that I do to my job is something that I do for others, Even in the marketing and advertising field, I read a headline recently that said, like, people do not trust advertising. It's there's too many ads and it's untrustworthy and it's too creepy. And I was like, wow, creepy. That was the first. And, you know, so I would say, like, my field, marketing and advertising, probably isn't one of the most trustworthy industries out there. But it was what I was doing with most of my time. And so when I could stand back and say, okay, well, I'm really good at communicating. That's what my degree's in. It's how I've been paid my entire professional life is communicating ideas and messages to the masses. And so I just took a step back and said, okay, like, what am I actually communicating here? And when I could look at a business and say, yes, I can see how they are involved in communities. I can see how they are like employing and loving their employees' families and making it really a team effort and having purposeful action Then I can get behind that and partner with these people. And when I couldn't see that, when it was maybe a little too distant for me, I just decided that it was no longer purposeful and tried to make that shift into purpose-driven marketing where social mission really became the bottom line versus profit. So you have a 20-something out there, 18, 19-year-old that's just graduated from college or is about to graduate, and they're thinking, okay, I mean, I want that. You know, I, I want my professional career to have some sort of purpose, but how do I do it? I mean, they're taught, go interview, you know, get the best paying job you can and move on. So what advice do you have for someone who is just starting out that wants to have purpose in their career? Mm -hmm. I would say that you're built for it and you're meant for it. And you do not, it is all cross industry. Of course, there's stuff that like, it just doesn't vote. Like, you know, if you're out there working in some sort of like child slavery shop, like it's, you're not going to be purposeful, right? So, but you don't have to be like a global humanitarian. You don't even have to be a pastor. You don't have to be what society is labeled helpful and purposeful to make a difference in other people's lives. You can be a graphic designer. You can be in computer engineering. I mean, think about all 
the amazing technology it took for us to be here in this room today doing this podcast to be able to talk about purpose and business. It took a lot of really smart people putting this equipment together and a lot of smart people starting businesses that we even have this space. So you talk about purpose in business. That's exactly it. So you just have to go into it. There's nothing wrong with making money, but your money has to be a tool. Your money cannot be the reason. Your money has to be a tool to go out there and change people's lives because that's where you find purpose. And without taking yourself out of the equation, it's just going to leave a void over and over again. So there's this you know, idea too much in business that you just need to do more so you can make more so you can buy more and you get on this hamster wheel and it just leads to like excessive consumerism and it just leads to more of a hole. And really what you're running for and trying to find is purpose. And so the idea that you can even be interviewing for a job, trying to pinpoint what the purpose would be is like an amazing start. I wish somebody would have told me that when I was in college. Then I would have probably saw things a whole lot different. It might not have changed my path at all, but I might have just gotten there quicker. Well, so who are some of your that, that's a I mean, that's a great um, mindset. I think it's a great attitude to have. Who influenced you along the way to kind of have that thought process? Because it's not that's not usual for, for people to think that way. <laughs> yeah. In my opinion opinion anyway. Yeah, well, that's what we're trying to change. We want to we definitely want to talk to more people and change that mindset. Um, But there have been several people. I mean, Brad Good, who's my former pastor who now lives in Florida, he brought that idea to the table at the um, years ago to me and his wife, Rachel. And then John Mark Comer, I just would say, like, if no one has followed him, he has a podcast, he writes books, but his book Garden City is incredible. And it's about how all of our skill sets are in are so important to be learning while we're here doing what we're doing here on earth. And so I would just say that everything that I read is based on Jesus's teachings. I just want to put that out there because that is where I get my leadership um, from. But there are people out there like John Mark Kramer who are putting it into today's language, who makes it really much easier to understand. And so Jordan Rayner is another one. He wrote an incredible book called Called to Create about how we're all called to be really creative and entrepreneurial and it's like in our blood and really good at business. And so he's a really good one to follow as well. It brings up another question. So entrepreneurs born or made? Are you born with that innate <laughs> sense about you or is it something that you can learn? I think that you can, I think you are born with it. I think that maybe culturally we've put a title on it that maybe is a little boxed in. Like you have to be a business starter to be an entrepreneur. And by definition, it could be that. But I mean, having creative ways to serve through your work or um, be purposeful to help people's lives through your work is an entrepreneurial spirit. You're coming up with ideas, original ideas, to be able to change things around you. I mean, it's the same spirit. I, I agree. I, when I look at an entrepreneur, I like to go back to a, uh, a definition of an entrepreneur from about 1600. John Baptiste say it, it, it's someone who takes resources at one level of productivity and, and raises them to a, lo- a, a higher mm. level. It gives you a very broad definition so that we aren't pigeonholing entrepreneurs just in business. And it's really what you're doing. Uh, you, you're, you're taking things that influence you in your life. And, and you talked about you know, the, the, the misnomer of work and life being a balance and, and, and some call it an integration. So if, if we look at where you where you've come from. And, and, you know, for, for, for me, you've, you've been in your career for a short time because I'm an old guy, yeah. but you've done a lot. So where do you see yourself over the next five years? Um, I think I see myself mostly writing and talking. I'm looking to get into the publishing world a little bit, hopefully in 2019. Really? And also, like, I'm doing a big TEDx talk this weekend that I'm really excited about called um, Destined to be a difference maker. I've been uncomfortably shoved into that world and I'm trying to embrace it as much as I can. So I think I see myself doing more of that. And I want to hang on. I still want to continue with my consulting because I love it and I've been able to 
build really great relationships because of it. It's why I'm here today with you. And so, yeah, definitely want to do more of that, I think. We'll see, though. TEDx. Tell us more. Oh, I'm so excited about this. So Spring Hill College, which is a local college in Mobile, Alabama, is holding their second TEDx event. So TEDx events are licensed TED events. And I applied. I was reached out. Someone reached out to me to apply. And I went through this grueling application process. And we have been prepping for it since August. So there's me and a handful of others. And the theme is dig deeper. So people will be talking about digging deeper into your life and all sorts of aspects. And I'm talking specifically about the marketplace and your job. Wow, that, that's great. So good luck with with that. Well, as we kind of start to wrap up, let's talk about a couple of fun things. So, you know, you talked about saying no, obviously, to professional requests and that kind of thing. What do you do to kind of decompress, unwind, kind of take some time away? Because that's very important, I think, uh, to, uh, you know, take time to, to recharge your batteries and that kind of thing. So what are some things that uh, you and your family uh, enjoy doing? We love going to the beach. So we're not too far from the beach here. So we do that a lot. And I am all about like just celebrating all the time. And so uh, I think for me, I'd like to turn off my phone for at least 24 hours a week. Uh, Being in our field with marketing, like I'm addicted to my phone and I understand that. So just simple things, even if I'm at my house, just turning off the phone is a big thing for me. Uh, And that can be really fun. But I love to sit on the floor and play Play-Doh and toys with my kids. And I love to swim. We're going to the mountains in a couple of weeks to just hang out and look at mountains and do nothing else but build fires. And so I think taking the time to plan vacations and rest is insanely important. So I'm all about that. I was really bad at that for a long time. And I've realized that that just works against you. So you got to be filled up to be able to release, you know, whatever you're trying to get out there. All right. So we open your iPhone. Uh, What's on the playlist right now? Oh, okay. You want me to tell you my Spotify Spotify. heavy rotation? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What's on the what's on the playlist these days? Okay, so my heavy rotation says right now, oh, I'm not connected to Wi-Fi, so it's not going to tell me, but Look Up Child, Lauren Daigle's new album. If you've not listened to Lauren Daigle's new album, it's the best thing ever. She just beat out Drake and all the other pop stars that I don't know the names to (laughs) on the Billboard charts. It's so good. And Johnny Swim and a whole lot of Need to Breathe and Hillsong Worship. Good nice. stuff. <laughs> uh, one last thing. So three words. When you think of a great leader, three words that come to mind. Oh. Turmoil. I know. Jeez. Well, number one is servant, servant leadership, inspiring, and dedicated. Nice. I like those. That's great. Great okay, first good. three words there. <laughs> well, as we're wrapping up this, it, it, it's a pleasure to Aww. have you here, as you know. And uh, I've always been a fan of yours. And, um, you know, when you started working with us, one thing that you – told me early on, I haven't done it yet, but you said I should write a book on leadership. Yes, you should. But out of that, really, this podcast is coming because it is about leadership. And, um, you know, you you figured out leadership early in life. And I'm so envious <laughs> that you did that. Um, and so, But you lead a lot more people yeah. than I do, though. But but the whole thing is, is it leaders, leaders in, in terms of of, of who they are and what they are, and then, you know, the, the size of their business doesn't matter. What you do and how you how you empower and influence people mm-hmm. has been fantastic, and it's still fun to kind of watch what you do. Mm-hmm. And thank you for being our first guest. Oh, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. I love it. Thank you. And as we wrap up, would you like to plug your social media, websites, anything that you have that uh, where we can find you out there in the, yes. on the internets? I, uh, yeah, I think the thing that the general masses would be more interested in is livefullandwell.com. So right now, it's literally just a sign-up page. We send free emails every single week with packed with resources and inspiration just to follow out your faith every day in the marketplace. And so sign up. Great. Join the thousands. Thank you, Vanessa. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. So fun. Well, thanks for listening to our podcast today. To never miss an episode, subscribe to Playing Above the Line at iTunes and anywhere else you get your podcast. And be sure to leave us a rating. We'd love to know what you think about our show. To contact us or to stay connected, follow us on social media at HBKCPAS on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Thanks for listening.